Hi, my name is Johnny Barch with Mindray Ultrasound, and this is the Mindray DP50 Ultrasound Machine. When your equipment arrives to you, the DP50 will be in a box along with the battery and the power cable. In a separate box will be your transducers that you ordered, and if you ordered a cart, which is the UMT150 mobile trolley cart, you'll have that in a separate box. And that'll take an assembly of about 30 to 45 minutes, and it comes with detailed instructions which you can follow. If you have any questions regarding those instructions, you can call your local sales agent or your clinical support specialist. From here we'll talk about how to assemble the machine which doesn't take much assembly but there are just a few things in the back including where the transducers connect and the power cord and some of the output that is involved on the back of the machine. As we look to the back of the machine we'll see where the transducers connect and we want to do that before we power on the machine. As we look at it we see that there's a little twist knob here we can take it out, and that's how you'll find it as you take it out of the box, and you'll put it back in. There's two ports in the back of the machine. And they just twist and turn and lock into place. You also have where your battery goes in this compartment here. It's one battery, it clicks into place, and you close the door. You also have a VGA output for connecting to an external monitor. You have your Ethernet port where you can connect to a LAN line for doing exporting of images in DICOM. You have two USBs here, two USB ports. You have a printer for digital output as well as the S-Video. If you have an analog printer, you'll see that that connects in along with the little remote plug-in in the back. And then right below that area, you have the power cord, and that's where you connect that and run it to the wall. If you do have the cart, you'll see that the DP50 fits right into place on the UMT150. And you'll notice that when you have the machine, it'll arrive looking like this. You use the two little buttons on the side to bring down where the keyboard is in the control panel. Now we'll power up the machine, which takes about 30 seconds or so. And the power button's right up here in the top corner. And again, it takes 25 to 30 seconds. So as we boot up the machine, we see that it has login information. This will come up automatically. There is no password that's involved. So what you'll do is you use the trackball and the set key in order to just click on login. Again, that's the trackball and the set key. As we adjust the date and time, the first time we reboot, it will say that the system time may be incorrect, and we'll discuss on how to set the correct time and date. Once we click OK, we'll see that we're in our normal imaging B mode screen. From here, we're going to go up to the top of the keyboard and we're going to press set. The setup button is going to allow us to go into our back menu where we go into our system preset. And this is where you'll be able to type in the name of your facility, address, and telephone number, really as much as you wish to do. Down below is where you select the time zone that you're in along with the correct date and time. You'll see that you have a 12 hour format as well as a 24 hour format. Other tabs in this system preset allow you to select the patient information that's applicable on the screen. And then we also have the ability to have a screen saver and our standby mode. Those will be default selected, so you'll see that they are checked when you look at your machine. Some places prefer to have that standby and screen saver, other places may not like to have that. So we'll go ahead and deselect those. And we'll also look at font size as well as arrow size. But you'll see these tabs across the top of the screen that allow you just to look at some of the imaging parameters and different things in the setup in terms of your measurement units, things like that. And it's worth exploring and taking a peek at these. As you get into the OB tab, you can look to see what the measure result pops up with. And, and oftentimes you'll want to click on that EDD display because that's nice to have popping up when you take your measurements. One of the things I want to point out to you is under the key config, that's the key configuration where you see what the print button does, what the save one and save two buttons do, which are down here on the right corner of the machine, as well as the F keys, which are right up on the top of the screen. As we look at those different features here, we, we see what they're set up for currently, and then we can look over here on the right side and see what the features are that we can add to them. You'll notice that these F1, 2, 3, and 4 keys at the top are a nice way to configure different things that you want to touch as kind of a quick setup function, a quick go-to, if you will. 
Down below as well, you'll see that the trackball can be different colors. And when you select that, you just use the trackball and the set key to pick that. Some places like to have a key volume on there. You can have it either as kind of a loud beep with each time you press one of the keys on a volume one, two, or three, or if you select volume of zero, that'll have no sound with each keystroke. As well, you can change the trackball speed and the key brightness. And those are all different settings you can have. One thing I recommend doing when you go into the setup menu on the system preset is going to your admin selection. This is where you see that enable user account control. And if you deselect that box, what you'll find is that when you boot up and boot down the machine, you won't have that login screen that comes up. If you prefer to leave that, then you're more than welcome to. But if you'd like to deselect that box right here, that means that when you boot up the machine next time, you won't have that reminder or, or login page. After you make any changes in the setup screen, you want to make sure that you come down to the OK button on the bottom of the screen. That will save the changes that you've made. So I'll scroll down here to the bottom and press OK with the trackball to move my cursor and the set key. And I'll go ahead and save the changes. As you look at other things that are on this list, you see exam preset, image preset, as well as a few other things. I'm going to briefly talk about exam preset. That shows you what is loaded on each transducer. You can see that one of the transducers plugged in is my curved transducer. There's a whole other list of ones, and it depends on which transducers you have, but you want to verify which transducers are plugged in, and you can take a look at those different exam presets that are loaded on there. You have the ability to look at the exam menu and pull things on and off based upon what you might be using the machine for by these arrows, the single arrow moving one of the selections over and the double arrows moving both of them back and forth. Again, once, any, once changes are made, you want to go ahead and select the OK button here on the bottom to save those changes. As you scroll down and look at some of the other things like your network preset, if you have the DICOM installed or wish to have that installed and that came with the software, that's something that you'd want to rec I'd recommend looking through the manual for and contacting your local sales rep or your clinical specialist that will be working with you. Other things that you may do on this setup button, you just you can explore through here. You're not going to hurt anything, and that's one of the things that you just want to look at and kind of get to know with your machine. Again, referring to the manual as you go through. When you're done in the setup you want to go ahead and hit the escape button up here in the top corner or you can scroll down to the bottom of the setup list and press the set button on return.